This hearty and delicious soup is a favorite in our family. And with chicken and sausage in it, it's just so delicious. I just know it's going to be a favorite in yours as well. And pair it with some uh, delicious crusty bread, and uh, you've just got a really, really great meal for a cold winter's night. The first thing we're going to do is start off with a wet paper towel. I'm going to spread that out on the counter, and that's going to keep the cutting board from sliding around on the counter because we've got a lot of vegetables to go ahead and cut up. First, we're going to start with the meat, though. This is a smoked sausage, and it's frozen. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the microwave for just one minute, and that'll uh, defrost it just enough so I can work with it and cut it up into bite-sized chunks. Next, I'm going to turn the stove top on to medium, and on there I've got a uh, Dutch oven type pot. You can use whatever kind of pot you have, and I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in there, let that get heated up. This easy open packaging on the sausage uh, is not very easy in my experience. I find it much easier to just take the knife and just slice right through the packaging in the middle there. And uh, the uh, sausage will come out of the packaging uh, pretty easy that way. Seem to struggle with the easy open uh, portion of the packaging. <laughs> so I'm going to cut that in half and then uh, cut the sausages lengthwise first. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut them lengthwise again. And the object here is to get uh, pieces of meat that are going to fit on a spoon. So probably about, oh, a half an inch or so uh, size pieces. So after I've cut them uh, twice lengthwise, then I'm going to cut them crosswise uh, across those lengths that I just did. And that will give us those little half inch uh, pieces just like that. That will be perfect on a soup spoon. In the pot those go along with that olive oil and we'll let those start to brown up a little bit. Meanwhile, we'll take uh, an onion. I like to cut off the ends first. Cut off the first end, cut off the second end, and then just cut the onion in half and remove that outermost layer. I, I don't like struggling trying to get the thin, thin little peel off. I just get rid of that outermost layer of onion. And in the pot, the onions go along with the meat. Now we're going to take some celery, give that a little wash. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the leafy ends of the celery and turn around and get rid of that uh, white uh, watery end. It doesn't seem to be much flavor in that white uh, watery end for some reason. But I like to cut these lengthwise as well, just like I did with the Polish sausage. And that just kind of gives you, uh, it's going to give me a little bit smaller pieces of celery. Because if I just cut them across the, the celery, what you're going to get is these C-shaped pieces, which is not bad. If you like that, go for it. But I like my celery bits a little bit smaller. And so if I cut them like that, then I'm just going to get kind of half C pieces. <laughs> but anyway, chop, chop, chop. Cut up that celery into little uh, pieces that will fit on a spoon as well. And in the pot they go. Give that a little stir, get things kind of mixed up so the onions and the celery can start getting some heat. Next we're going to do some carrots. Go ahead and get these peeled up. I like the super simple carrot peeler. And here's one of the fancy peelers and that probably costs $10. But for some reason the $2 super cheap, super simple carrot peelers just uh, seem to work better. So I'm going to go ahead and line up all the ends of the carrots with the side of my knife and just cut all those off at once. Flip them around and do the exact same thing. Line up the ends with the knife. Snip. Easy peasy. I'm going to cut these carrots lengthwise as well. I think you're kind of seeing a pattern here in, in the way I'm cutting the meat and vegetables. And then I'm going to cut them crosswise again, coming up with that kind of similar size as the other uh, things in the soup. In the pot they go. Give that another little stir. The object here is to start getting these vegetables to cook in and get some of that water to kind of evaporate. And I'm using uh, some leftover chicken uh, for this pot of soup. But if I was using raw chicken, I would have chopped that up into bite-sized pieces and put it in at the same time as the sausage. Uh, but since I've got this leftover chicken, this is what I'm using today. And I'm just going to rough, uh, roughly cut it into uh, some smaller pieces because there are some pretty big chunks in there. And you can do it how you like. If you want your chicken completely shredded up, go ahead and do that. That would work fine too. But I'm just going to kind of chunk this up. I'm going to put that in a dish, and since it's already cooked, it doesn't need to go in the pot yet. Next is some green beans. I had a half a bag of green beans left over in the freezer. I thought I'd go ahead and put them in this soup. And they're still frozen. It's a little bit difficult to cut. It'd probably be easier to cut if I just put them in the microwave for just about a minute. To, it'll soften them up a little bit, but I'm getting it done this way, but I probably should have just softened them up a little bit. But 
get those chopped up and uh, put into a little bowl we'll set those aside and those will go in the soup uh, later next thing is some peas I've got some peas left over too and the thing about these vegetables is you can pick whatever vegetables you have in your house or whatever vegetables you like I'm gonna go ahead and pop those uh, green vegetables in the microwave here for a minute just to uh, thaw them out a little bit just so when I dump them in the soup it uh, won't won't take the heat out of the soup so much and I'll give the meat and vegetables in the pot a quick stir just to make sure nothing's burning looks like those are coming along nicely and I want the vegetables to get softened and uh, I want some of that fat to start cooking out of the sausage because there's quite a bit of fat in there and you'll see how I deal with that here later next ingredient is some Yukon gold potatoes I like to leave the skin on these potatoes. They're pretty thin skinned potatoes and uh, most of the nutrients in the potatoes actually in the skin. But uh, there's just a few spots, you know, that I like to remove rather than peel the whole potato. I'll just remove, uh, you see there's a spot right there. I'll just go ahead and lop that off with a knife. Usually, uh, you know, there's maybe two or three of those spots on each potato and just kind of go ahead and remove those. And then all that's left to do is just dice them up into the bite sized pieces just to match the other vegetables. As you can see, I've got some, uh, you know, half inch size cubes for those as well. I'll put those potatoes in the bowl with the peas and green beans, and uh, we'll go into the soup here in a little bit. Back to the soup pot and give that another stir just to make sure nothing's burning. Now I'm going to make some chicken broth for our soup. I've just got some hot water here that I've heated up in the microwave, not boiling, just hot. And I'm adding, I've got four cups of water here, so I'm adding four heaping teaspoons of the chicken bouillon. And just go ahead and give that a stir. And we'll, we'll be adding more liquid than this to the soup, but this is just to start with. So those vegetables are looking nice. You can see they're kind of glistening from the fat that's being released from the sausage. So now it's time to add some seasonings. First is some garlic powder, about that much. Next is some oregano, about that much. Next is some lemon pepper, about that much. Paprika, about that much. This is body, a complete seasoning. I like this seasoning. It's got a bunch of different things in it, like garlic, shallot, basil, peppercorns. Uh, it's just a really, really great seasoning, and I really haven't found a meat or vegetable that it's not good on. Just a little bit of mustard just adds a nice little kick. And then some Worcestershire, and then some Worcestershire sauce, just a few glugs of that in there. That'll give us a nice uh, umami flavor, as they say. Give that a stir and get those spices all mixed in with the vegetables and right now your kitchen should start smelling fantastic with all those spices. Now this is optional but I like to do it because the sausage actually releases quite a bit of fat as it cooks and if you, if you don't do this what you'll end up with at the end is a soup that has kind of a little bit greasy. Not bad but a little bit. So I like to add a little bit of flour at this point. And what that do, does is it binds with the oil and fat that was released uh, from the sausage, and uh, basically it creates a, a, a roux. But we're not we're not making a stew or anything like. But you won't even notice this in the soup really. But what 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 you will notice is that the soup will not be greasy. And I just add just enough flour to soak up the the grease on the vegetables until the vegetables and the meat uh, start to look kind of dry and there's no grease anywhere to be seen. And after you cook, cook this for just like a minute or so, you're gonna start to get a little fawn on the bottom of the pot there from that flour that's starting to cook. And before that starts to burn, I'm gonna go ahead and dump the chicken stock in. Go ahead and stir that, mix that chicken stock in with the meat and vegetables and scrape up all that stuff that's on the bottom of the pan and also the stuff on the sides. That's all good flavor there. That's gonna really help develop uh, some deep, deep flavors in the soup. So once the pot has had a chance to come back up to a kind of a simmer, I'm going to go ahead and add the potatoes, the green beans, and the peas. Just give them a mix. You can really kind of see it starting to come together now. Most of the vegetables are still raw, but the colors are starting to come together, and this is, this is starting to look like something that's going to be really good. And believe me, it is. Whoops, I guess I just remembered I forgot to put in some pepper. Some pepper is good. Lots of pepper. So now I'm going to go ahead and add another four cups of hot water that I've already microwaved just to heat it up a little bit. And then in goes the chicken. And if I had been using raw chicken, then obviously that would already be in the pot now because I would have cooked that along with the sausage back at the beginning. But in goes the chicken. We'll give that another mix up, get all the chicken mixed up in with the vegetables. And at this point, I, I try to be kind of gentle with it. I, I don't want to break up that chicken too much. But, you know, if you like the chicken all shredded and broken up real well, 
by all means do that that's good too so I'm gonna make sure everything is submerged in the broth and put the lid back on and turn the heat up a little bit and bring it up to a you know a, a nice gentle boil and once it gets to that point I'm gonna just give it another stir and then turn the heat down to to like medium low just and just keep it on a low simmer and uh, it'll take about 20 30 minutes until the potatoes and the other vegetables in there are tender and you could eat it then if you want to but I really prefer to let this just simmer on low for a minimum of like two to three hours and I think when I made it today it actually simmered for four hours so over the course of the several hours the flavors really develop more and you just get a really really uh, deep flavor in the soup so in my opinion the best accompaniment to a hearty soup is a nice piece of crusty bread I like these frozen baguettes uh, that we get from the grocery store uh, fresh bread is good but this these are nice to keep on hand and uh, they only take seven to ten minutes in the oven just throw them on a pan pop them in the oven and you have bread that tastes almost as good as fresh bread uh, really easily I love that stuff so it's dinner time and this soup has really come together over the last few hours. Take a look at the chicken, carrots, chunks of sausage, the green beans, the potatoes. This soup has it all. The way we eat a soup like this is this is basically the whole meal. I mean it's got your meat, it's got your vegetables in it. This is the whole meal so we're going to fill the bowl up all the way to the top. I wish YouTube had smell-o-vision because this soup smells fantastic. So there's the chicken and sausage vegetable soup with crusty bread. Like I said, this is a favorite soup in our family, and I think if you give it a try, maybe make it your own, change some ingredients around to the way you like it, I think you're going to love it too. Hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.